My name is Bizod Aquino from Rafa Medical Center. I'm a midwife by profession. And as we all know, this week is marked World Breastfeeding Week. The theme for the week is support breastfeeding for a healthier planet. So we'll be discussing a few topics under breastfeeding. It's going to be interactive. I'd want to hear your experiences and your suggestions as well. So So we are starting shortly. Okay, so our objective is to identify some benefits of breastfeeding to the mother and baby, and also positioning and attaching of the baby to breast, and to discuss some challenges faced by mothers during breastfeeding. Now we start with the definition of breastfeeding. Breastfeeding is the feeding of an infant or young child with breast milk directly from female human breast, not from a baby bottle or other container. So in short, we are saying that breastfeeding is the act of breastfeeding or feeding directly from the breast to the baby's mouth, not through any other means. This is a picture of the female human breast, and it's actually a cross section of the female breast. It's actually a cross section of the female breast. We have the low A second, please. Sorry, you're not sharing your screen. You can't see anything. So we have the low, the areola nipple milk duct and the areolar cells. Okay, I think this is, I have a clearer picture here. These are the lobes, that is where the breast milk is produced. And these lines here are the channels through which the breast milk will pass to the areola. The areola is usually the darkened portion of the breast. And the nipple is the exit way to the or for the breast milk. It is known that in dark complexion, the nipple and the areola enlarge and darken. And when it comes to the fair people or fair complexion, the areola portion and the nipple only deepens. And when you are pregnant or when you are lactating, you realize that there are small bumps on the nipple area. If you can see, my picture is not so clear, but there are small, small projections here. These are called the Montgomery gland or tubercle. And these help to prepare the breast milk for breastfeeding by softening the nipple. So we come to a very interesting topic, how breast milk is produced. Okay, so my slide says that how the body responds to baby suckling. The infant suckling simulates the nerve endings in the nipple and areola, which signals the pituitary gland in the brain to release two hormones, which are prolactin and oxytocin. So basically, we are saying that as the baby suckles, Mother has given has put to bed, the baby is suckling. Nearly the baby starts suckling. There are nerve impulses around the nipple, this part, which sends signals to the brain. Once it gets to the brain, the brain is stimulated and alerted that the baby is out, so breast milk needs to be produced. Therefore, the brain will release two very important hormones, which are oxytocin and prolactin. Now, what prolactin does is that it's released into the bloodstream. That's the first point. And secondly, when it gets to the bloodstream, it gets through to the breast and the lobe. These are the parts. We have um, very, very tiny cells there where the milk is produced itself. So it kind of draws all the nutrients it needs from the blood for the production of the breast milk. So once it gets there, the action of prolactin is done. 
now oxytocin comes into play. Oxytocin now has to squeeze these tiny lobes, which contains the breast milk, into these tubes, which gets into the areola. This part is where the breast milk is stored. Then after that, it, 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 as the baby startles, it's exited through the nipple. Please, as we go on, if there, there are any questions, you can unmute your mic or raise your hand and you can ask. Thank you. Oxytocin causes the cells around the alveola to contract and eject milk down the milk duct. I don't know, but most, most of the time we hear something called um, leg down reflex, leg down reflex. It has special effects. So we talk about leg down reflex, which is experienced in numerous ways. First of all, as the baby suckles actively, that's when you can say that, okay, you're experiencing the let down reflex. So the let down reflex is experienced in numerous ways, which includes the infant begins to actively suck and swallow. And you realize that, as we said earlier in our slide, the milk that is produced is pushed down through this tube to the areola. So as it's a process, as the milk is being produced, the old milk is pushed down to the areola area whilst new one is produced. So that is the effect of the let down reflex. And you realize that as the mother is suckling, the other breast may start dripping or the other breast starts dripping and the mother will feel some tingling sensation or fullness of the breast. And most of the time, especially with first time mothers, those who have just delivered maybe about a week old from day, day one of delivery, so about a week old or the first week of nursing, you realize that most of the mothers will have um, cramping like menstrual cramps while they breastfeed. It's all because of the let down reflex. Now let's talk about the contents of breast milk. Breast milk has enormous benefits and has enormous nutrients. The very, very important one, the very first thing I'll talk about is water. It contains more than 90% of water. And water, we know, is good for hydration. Therefore, whilst you're breastfeeding, you don't need to add water because the baby is getting enough of water. So we have proteins as well. We have immunoglobulins. We have lactoferrin. We have lysosome. We have bifidus factor. These are big, big ways. But basically, all that it means is that it helps the baby in different ways, preventing type 2 diabetes, preventing diarrhea, and helps to keep healthy intestinal flora, and also has anti-inflammatory functions. Therefore, it protects the baby from getting in any form of infection, and also helps to build the baby's immune system against infection. And we have one very important nutrient called fat. With fat, it's very, very necessary for brain development. And it helps in the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, and vitamin E. You know, vitamin K helps with clotting factors. Vitamin A is good for the eye and all that. So all these nutrients can be found in the breast milk. And we have vitamins, which are the soluble vitamins and the water soluble and the fat soluble vitamins I spoke about earlier. And so we come to benefits of breastfeeding mother. As a mother, what benefits will you derive from breastfeeding your child or your baby? For a mother, it helps to promote the mother to child bond and also helps to prevent bleeding after delivery. It helps to involute the uterus. Involution of uterus basically means that, you know, if you are not pregnant, your womb is in there, it's a pelvic organ, but once you get pregnant, it becomes an abdominal organ. Okay. Therefore, as I delivery it has to go back to its non-pregnant stage. How does it do that? Breastfeeding helps it by the releasing of the um, sorry, the oxytocin we spoke about helps to contract the uterus and gradually go back to this non-pregnant stage. And I have a very controversial point here. It serves as a form of natural family planning. Hmm. With that one, 
Um, I know some people have issues with that, but with that, um, I would say the key is to breastfeed both day and night, not just breastfeeding in the morning and during or during the day and not breastfeeding at night. They have to do both day and night breastfeeding at least between eight to twelve times throughout the day. You have to breastfeed. And most of the time this particular point is effective for it's effective between um six months. That's the exclusive breastfeeding period. And also reduces the risk of breast and ovarian cancer in the mother. And as usual, Lajan, it saves time and it's not expensive. Therefore, it's very convenient for the mother and the father as well. Okay, so now we go to the benefits of breastfeeding for baby. The baby's nutrients is, the, is assured in the baby's nutrients is assured in the right proportion. The first point says it provides the best possible nutrition to the baby. We can all testify or testify to the fact that breastfeeding is the number one feed recommended for babies, and we can't do without the breast milk. It reduces the incidence of coughs and cold, ear infections and diarrhea through its protective factors. So basically, it prevents a whole lot of infections from diarrhea and all of that. Yeah. It is also essential for optimal physical, emotional, and mental development of the, the, the child. So mentally, emotionally, physically, the child goes well at the expected <laughs> rate and all that. Now, we would ask that someone who asks, how long am I supposed to breastfeed? So we take note of this. I think it's very important. When it comes to newborns, newborns can nest for about five to 10 minutes per breast every two to three hours. This comes to about 10 to 12 feet per day. In the beginning, there is only colostrum. Colostrum is the yellowish thing that comes out from the breast bed. That's the, the first milk that is produced. Most of the time, our mothers will say, oh, let's express it through our way. But it contains very, very, very important nutrients. And most of the time, the colostrum has a higher amount of fat and it helps the baby to regain their weight because most of the time within the first few days after delivery the babies lose weight it's just a little just insignificant but they lose weight and within a week or after, after seven days they have to regain their weight so the colostrum helps them to regain their best weight so therefore with the newborns as a mother you have to receive between five to ten minutes her breast every two to three hours. So in a day, you're feeling about 10 to 12 times. Then, then also, you come to um, a baby that no. is one month or more. So it says as the baby gets older, the stomach will get larger. He will nest less frequently, but for a longer duration as each breastfeeding session. For example, he may nest 20 to 30 minutes or 40 minutes per breast every three to four hours. So with a newborn, every five to 10 minutes, you have to breastfeed. Five to 10 minutes, you put the baby to breast within two to three hours. With while the baby grows from one month and above, the baby's tummy gets larger or enlarged and the baby would have to feed for frequent, mm. frequently but for longer duration as compared to as the baby was in the okay. Then by six months you realize mm. that the baby may breastfeed for 20 to 30 minutes per breast about three to five times a day. So basically they think that as the baby grows the frequency reduces. The frequency of breastfeeding reduces. Now we talk about contraindication to breastfeeding. Contraindication basically means what contraindication basically means what um or condition that will prevent you from breastfeeding your baby. Yeah. So if the mother is on chemotherapy, that's the treatment for cancer, it's not advisable to breastfeed. If the mother is on illicit drugs like um cocaine, the alcohol and those things, so it's not it's also a contraindication to breastfeeding. Also, we come to HIV infection. With HIV infection, I know it's also a controversial point. 
HIV infection, you can breastfeed, but the caution is that you don't do mixed feeding. So if you are breastfeeding, you are, you are breastfeeding throughout, no mixed feeding, because as you, mixed feeding means you are feeding the baby with the breast and also preparing artificial feet alongside. So maybe you do the breastfeeding, then once a while you, then once a while you prepare feet for the baby, no. With HIV infection, we don't do it that way. Well, so if you if you say you are breastfeeding, you are breastfeeding. So what we do is that with HIV infection, when it comes to antenatal, during antenatal classes, we pre, we, we advise you or we um, educate you for you to uh, understand the risk involved in doing mixed feeding and for you to understand the fact that it's either you choose whether to breastfeed or alone or you do the bottle feed. So you don't have to combine both. Now, we come to the proper way to breastfeed. Stimulate the baby's mouth to open by touching the nipple. Then let the baby open the mouth wider. Bring the baby near to the breast and latch on to the breast. So I have a picture here of a baby having um, latching on correctly. So you see that with here, my arrow is pointing to the baby's mouth, the, the, the lower lip widely open, and almost or all the areola, that's the back end portion of the breast, getting to the mouth of the baby. Now, you realize that the baby's mouth is widely open, the chin is touching the breast as well, that is what is here, and the lip are flung out, that is widely open, and the breast looks full and round, and the mother can also hear the sound of suckling and swallowing. After that, you said the nipple looked longer and round after breastfeeding. I have a picture here of how the nipple will look inside the baby's mouth during breastfeeding. So now the baby is the same thing we've spoken about already. But if you look at the sixth picture, you realize that the nipple has elongated to the back of the throat. So meaning the baby is not tackling directly on the nipple. This is very important. If you don't achieve this, always you will have sore nipple and so, sore or cracked nipple, which is very, very, very painful and prevents the mothers from breastfeeding effectively. We come to breastfeeding position. Um, I have a few illustrations here. The first point is cradle hold. With that, that is the commonest or the most popular um, method used. So I have my baby here. Hi, baby. Yeah. So with this one, my baby is like this, and the the head of the baby is resting on the on my elbow, bent slightly bent like this. Yeah. So this is the popular breastfeeding position during the first few weeks of nursing. Now we come to the second point, which is the cross cradle hold. It's similar to the cradle hold, but with that one, the the arm, the other arm supports the head whilst the the the. So it says hold your baby across your lap, supporting her with the same arm as your breast. This is similar to cradle hold and works well during the initial days of breastfeeding. It is also a perfect position for bottle feeding. So most of the time. So with this, you hold the baby like that and you go this way. Okay. Now we have the football hold. With that, the baby will be, the ba you hold the baby at, the, at your side, face up and lengthwise. With this hold, baby is tucked under your arm off to the side and held with one arm while you support your breast with the other arm. So this way. Then the laid back hold, you lie in a semi-re-inclined position and make your baby to lie across your stomach. So with that one, you are lying relaxed on your back and the baby will lie across your stomach as indicated in the picture. Then the last one we talk about is um, side lying hold. But then they say lie down on your side and face your baby and face your baby towards your breast support the baby with your hand good for moms who have had 
C-section. It also helps moms relax while the baby feeds. So that is also indicated in the picture. But one key to the birth feeding position is that you have to sit in a relaxed position. You have to be relaxed. Your back has to you have to sit in a comfortable position because if you don't take care, because of breastfeeding, you are going to breastfeed for quite some time. Therefore, your back would have to rest on something in it, and you don't have to hang your, your feet. So you can get a small stool while breastfeeding and let's put your legs, relax your legs on it. Now we come to signs that the baby is getting enough breast milk. How do you know as a mother that my baby is getting enough milk or my baby is not getting enough? So now, if you breastfeed, after breastfeeding, within one to two hours, the baby is still not hungry, then you can know that, yes, the baby is getting enough milk. Also, when you check the urine, you see that the urine should be clear and diluted about five to ten, and the baby will pass the urine about five to six times a day. Also, you realize that the baby passes bright yellow watery stool within about six to eight hours, sorry, six to eight times a day, and you regain the birth weight after two weeks. Um, regaining of the birth weight is very important. By two weeks, the baby would have to regain the birth weight and even add on to it. So that is also another way to know that the, the baby is getting enough breast milk. With the passing of the stool, if you are doing exclusive breastfeeding, most of the time you realize that immediately you put the baby to breast and uh, mainly you put the baby to breast after you are, you are done breastfeeding, the baby passes through. Most of the time, you realize it's not diarrhea, it's normal. But if you are doing bottle feed, you realize that that is not the way to go. Breast milk supply can be increased by frequent feed day and night and allowing or limited breastfeeding to satisfy baby's suckling needs. We've already spoken about the number of times we are supposed to breastfeed. And the mother would have to eat and drink adequately. Also, in our settings, we advise or advocate that um, roasted corn, granite, uh, mashed cake, and those things also help to um, increase the breast milk mm -hmm. supply. All right, so now I have given birth. I have enough, more than enough breast milk. What do I do? Um, you have to store some for future use. So, um, with the storing or the storage of breast milk, if yeah, using it immediately, okay, or within six hours, you can keep it at room temperature, it's fine. But if um, and you can re refrigerate within an hour, uh, if you're using over an hour or 24 hours, sorry, a second, please. Okay, unless being used immediately, refrigerate it within an hour, then tall milk. Store the milk in a container of lukewarm water or running water. So if um, you finish storing the milk, you've kept the milk in a refrigerator and you want to reuse it, you don't need to boil hot water and put the bottle of breast milk in it. No, just use running water or lukewarm water and put the bottle in it and that's fine for the baby. And you can store breast, breast milk for as long as possible, provided you refrigerate it. You can refrigerate the breast milk and use it for even a year. But the important point here is that once you have poured the milk, once you've taken the milk from the fridge or the refrigerator or the freezer and you have warmed it, you don't need to send it back to the fridge if it's not used. It should be discarded. It's very, very important. Okay, so what complications can arise due to breastfeeding? Um, you can have excessive milk production, and also you can have sore nipple. Sore nipple is basically cracks, or the nipple actually becoming reddish and becoming sore. Most of the time, due to um, not positioning the baby well or improper latching, you can also have um, breast engorgement. Breast engorgement: your breast is filled to the your your breast is is, is over producing the milk. Yeah. You can have breast abscess. That is when infection sets in breast abscess and 
mastitis. So when it comes to sore nipple, what causes sore nipple? Sore nipples can be caused by improper latching on by the baby. If you have dry skin and if the baby bites, at times the baby grabs the nipple and puts the tongue, uh, sorry, the gum on it so strong that it will cause some cracks on the nipple, which is very painful. Now, nutrition while breastfeeding. Um, with that, as a mother, what should you eat? Um, eat a well-balanced diet, varied diet. I'll say preferably um, soupy food. You can take light um, fluid diet, but you, you have to avoid caffeinated drinks and avoid alcohol. And try as much as possible taking lots of water, which is very, very mm -hmm. important. Also, you can talk to your doctor about any multivitamin with iron, which also boosts your nutrition, nutrition level. All right, so we come to COVID-19 today. Um, remember to wash your hands before breastfeeding and breastfeed as often as possible. If you are sick, make sure you wear a mask. And if you need to go to the hospital, keep baby with you and breastfeed or express your breast milk. It's fine. Breastfeed as much as possible and get support when needed. Always remember that COVID-19 is not a contraindication to breastfeeding. So you can breastfeed as much as possible. Thank you very much. So please, your questions. Time for questions, please. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, please. My question is, um, there are instances where I've seen mothers breast after giving birth, not producing breast milk at all. So they end up, the kids end up not breastfeeding, not once, twice, on three occasions. So I would like to know what causes that. Okay. Thank you for your question. With breast milk, you know, there are always, there's always an exception to every rule. But ideally, every mother should be able to breastfeed. But at times, there are um, a little a few extremes. So people who will not produce at all and people who would produce in excess. So it's just in excess. But majority of women will be able to breastfeed. Whilst you, then I will just send a template. But based on the information you get. Mr. Louis, please, can, can you raise your mic? How much you can do it? Yeah, thank you. Please, I answer your question. Mm, yes. That's not. But one thing. One thing about breast milk, breast feeding or breast breast milk production is that it doesn't matter the size of your breast, whether you have small breast or big breast, you should be able to lactate. But as I said, with the extremes, those ones I wouldn't say medical. It's a medical condition. I mean, that's a person's physiological makeup. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Okay. Okay. So, um, I. Please, your, your line is not so clear. Can you come again? Yes, I'm just, I just said two weeks ago. But uh, my smoke was not going well, and it was sitting very well. So, we have to. Do the formula. But now it's like... Can I please, can you start all about it? Your line was not clear. Is it better now? Please, is it better now? Um, yes. Okay, so I'm saying that I... I, I have to breast milk supply wasn't so much. But okay. baby was packing so well, so it was but he wasn't getting enough. So we decided to pack this way. But now he's not able to walk onto the breast milk. Uh, the, he will be struggling, like you feel that he's struggling to hold on. He's not holding on to it. Hey. So, oh, can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. It's not coming from my. Oh. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, please, I can hear you. Please, your name, please. Come again. Can I know your name? Adovia. But you're using Esther, or you're not the one? Adovia. No, I'm not. I, 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 I'm Esther. Okay, Esther, please, can you mute your mic? Is that? Can Hello? You I should... Mute your mic. Oh, okay. Do, don't bring him go. Can I come again? Yes. Okay, so I'm seeing that after I did it, the my smoke supply was much. And baby was feeding so well. Like the breast him. So we decided to supplement it with formula. But now my problem is that now if I give the breast milk, he, I give him the breast milk, he, sometimes he will, he will be fighting with it like he doesn't want the breast any longer. But then when he and wakes up, he, he takes it and he sucks. But then in a normal day, when they are sick, and I check for maybe after two hours, he breast or three hours out to breastfeed, he doesn't hold on to it. So I don't know whether because we introduced the bottle to him, he's feeling too lazy to stuck on the breast or the scrub. I'm, I'm really okay. okay. Thank you. So one, thank you. So one thing that we advocate for is cup feeding. Cup, please, are you, are you there? Yes, I'm yes. Cup feeding. Um, okay. you, since you, if you express or you prepare... Um, how do you call it? Um, the the formula. Yeah. You don't need to use the bottle because most of the time the kids get into the bottle and they even bite on your nipple or they refuse to grasp the nipple and latch on properly. So yeah. I would say you shouldn't do um, bottle feeding. Do cup feeding or spoon. Cup or spoon feeding. Yes, and also um, how how is the nipple? Is it big? If the nipple is too big for the baby. Not it's not, it's my nipple is always flat. Your, your nipple is flat. Yes, it's not big. Unless maybe he's coming to it and find that maybe um, it's coming out a little bit and it looks flat. And I feel maybe that one. So with flat nipple, you have to kind of pull the nipple out a little before you, 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 you position the baby. Okay. Yes. I'll have answered you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I raised my hand. I have a question. Yes, please. Okay. So this is Anifia. Can I speak now? Yes, please. You can. Okay. So mine is similar to what Adubia um, just ex explained. Okay. So um, maybe was, yes, sucking. I wasn't producing as much. So I added formula to it. And um, so he drinks more, more, mostly formula from the bottle, which I don't have any issue with. But I relaxed a little bit with the breast. But now I'm trying to um, pump again. I w basically want to pump and put it in a bottle and give it to him because I have to you know, go to work, and etc. But I, I was, as I was even listening, I was pumping. But I'm not producing as much as I... I even used to before. So I want to know if, let's say, you take a break, which I did, is it possible to still try to um, produce more? And it's only one breast that has the milk in the first place. My left breast, the right one doesn't produce anything. And secondly, the foods you mentioned, yes, um, the mash kinky, and then I've heard of bank wine. Are, those, are they true? Because all these foods are fattening foods so <laughs> i oh, want to fattening. know if yes mash kinky makes you can make you fat mm. Mm. so i okay. want to know if they are true if they actually help in the milk production if it's actually true because i've been arguing with my mom a lot about that okay. thank you i think yeah thank you um with your question I think um, frequent, I, as I said in my slides, I am going to say frequent feeds day and night help to produce enough milk. But ideally, your 
body should be able to produce enough milk to um to for the baby okay at the time to uh, satisfy the baby's needs so with this i think because you paused a while the the milk production was cut off because the suckling goes on, then the uh, impulses send to the brain, the brain will release the prolactin and the oxytocin, which help with the milk production and moving the milk from the producing duct to the nipple and all that. So I think since it was cut off at a point, your body is now relaxed. So you have to start all over again, kind of. That's what I think. And with the food, the kosher food, I don't know whether it's the meat or something, but it works for some people. It works for some people. Hello? Okay. <laughs> so yeah. I guess I'll try it too. Yes. Yeah. So I think we should do um, an whether it's true or not. Maybe we can come out today. Hello. Yes, please. Um, please, I want to know that if you breastfeed and you don't breastfeed for like two days and you give it to the child, does the milk become spot? Does no. the milk look like that? No, not at all. The milk is so fresh. But I remember I gave my child, and usually um, I give him the left breast. But for some time now, I guess that well, yesterday I decided to give him the right breast. Mm -hmm. I give it to him, and now he's running. Oh, no. It doesn't have to do with any milk getting soft. Not at all. Because yeah. it's freshly produced. The milk is freshly produced and it's soft. In fact, it's not out of the breast. It's soft. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay. I also have this. I like that. But I, I need you guys to... I want to hear your experiences when it comes to breastfeeding as well. Also, I heard that... Hello? I'm listening. I also heard that when you are breastfeeding, it's a natural way of um, maybe um, separating your bed, like um, how do family I mean? planning. Yeah, family planning. Yes. But um, um, I've been doing that, but I found out that I'm pregnant again. How often do you breastfeed? Most of the time, I'm, I'm, I'm always breastfeeding. No. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And you breastfeed day and night? Yes. So can you say you breastfeed about 12 times a day? Um, Any time he wants it, I give it to him. But there was some time I was going to school, I was going for lectures. So sometimes when I go, I express it. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I did. But I don't know whether because I am pregnant and I'm giving it a child a breast milk, that's why he's, vomit, um, he's having diarrhea. Oh, so you're pregnant again and you're still breastfeeding? Yes. yes. Oh, then you have to stop. You can't be pregnant and so breastfeed that one. So how old is the is the first first child? Um, he's he'll be nine um nine months in um on Friday. Okay, I think you have to stop breastfeeding. Oh, okay. Mm, it's not it's not good for the the pregnancy. Because I was even surprised when I found out that I was saying was who said um when you are this thing breastfeeding there wouldn't be any. No, you see, during the night, eh, you have to continue the chain. It's not like you breastfeed at 7 p.m. and you sleep at like 1 a.m. or something before you breastfeed again. During the day, you breastfeed between 2 to 3 hours. So you continue like that throughout the night. And you can have the effective breast, uh, family planning uh, thing. Um, Please, you get it. Yeah. So if you cut the chain during the night, and most of the time, for lacking uh, production, is increased in the night. So if you cut off that breastfeeding uh, chain, then you can get pregnant. Um, Michelle, like, can I speak? Yes, please. Um, for the lady who, whose baby is nine months and has found out that she's pregnant again, uh, first of all, my name is Dr. Ampopo. So I'm just contributing to the discussion. Uh, for the lady who is um, nine months, uh, whose child is nine months and she's found that she's pregnant again, the family planning method where um, breastfeeding prevents 
pregnancy from occurring, it is most effective in the first six months of your pregnancy above, after you deliver. The first six months, beyond six months, is, is not a, a safe method to use. You understand? So um, I guess maybe you use that method beyond six months. That's why you, that's why, that's how come the pregnancy occurred. So once your period, once your period comes, or if you go beyond six months, then that method is no more effective. It, it, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. So once you get your first period or you go beyond six months, then that method of family plan is no more effective. So I presume that's how come uh, the pregnancy occurred. Okay. So that's just okay. the contribution I wanted to, 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 to add. The other thing that I, the question that I was going to ask Giselle was, how do you treat a cracked nipple? The cracked nipple, you can just squeeze a little of the breast milk on it. I hear it helps to heal it mm -hmm. as well. Then you also have to practice proper latching because if you continue doing the wrong thing, then it will still crack and it will tend to stop. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, so what what you what you should do also is that because that nip, that breast will get will get engorged, you should you should um, express from that nip, express, but you don't give that that that, that uh, nipple to you don't give that nipple to the baby. And as Priscilla said, you use some of the breast milk over the that crack nipple. And in a few days, you find out that it, it will heal. Okay. So, so just, um, please, just, I, I have a question. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, please, I'd like to know how long, how do you determine if the baby is satisfied? How long is the baby supposed to suck on the breast? And then my second question is, um, if you express, what's the measurement? I mean, what measurement is required for the baby to feed on when you express? Okay, let's say from right from birth, um, let's say to about six months old baby. Is there any specific measurement? And then my third question, um, how to store the breast milk? Because just recently we're having a conversation at work and my colleague, she was saying that... Um, she thinks people, she thinks that people or mothers are not able to store the breast milk well because she knew a lady who lost the baby because they didn't store the breast milk well. Okay, so these are my three questions, please. Thank you. So with the first question, um, how long to breastfeed? Um, with yes. slide sixteen. The test with newborns, they can nest for about five to ten minutes on each breast, and you have to breastfeed every two to three hours. So that's for newborns. Two to three hours on the on one breast. No, no, no. Five to ten minutes on each okay. breast, every okay. two to three hours. Oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh, okay. You get it. Uh -huh. Okay. And as the baby grows older, um, you breastfeed about twenty to forty minutes. On each breast, every three to four hours. Okay. Continue like that. Please, the second question again was: um, in case you express, you mm -hmm. express the breast milk. I want to know the measurement, the ounces that would really satisfy the baby. Oh, that one. I, I think it depends on the the baby, the weight, the age of the baby. Yes, would would, would be a factor. So I can say um, maybe 120 mils to satisfy your baby. Depend it depends on the baby's age. Yes. I don't know if another person has a different opinion. But I think it depends on the baby's age as well. But you talk about um, milk storage. Yes. So what I know is that we can express. So expressing at room temperature. I mean, yeah. you can use within six hours, it's fine. But after six hours, you can keep it in the fridge, not the refrigerator, fridge. Um, okay. And when you're ready to use, just take it from the bottle, get lukewarm water and put the bottle in it. If it's a little warm, then you give it to the baby. So you don't need to use hot water to, 
to make the to warm the milk. Please, you get it. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. Then um, after you know, some people would want to keep their breast milk for long, for like a year or two. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Which was so you have to refrigerate it, like freeze it, freeze the milk. So if you freeze the milk and it's ready for use, you just take the milk from the, the, the fridge, put it down, and let it thaw completely. Then you put the bottle of the uh, with the milk in the lukewarm water. Please, you get it. Yes, I do. And yeah. the key, um, the very important uh, thing about thawing of breast, uh, breast milk storage is that once you thaw it and it's no use, you can't uh, send it back to the fridge. You have to discard it. That is very important. Okay. Yeah. Please, any more? Oh. Yeah, so, you know, my second question, I'm still not okay the, when you express. Because I've had this with you. Yes, because my sister-in-law, she called me. She was wondering. She was asking me a question that uh, if she expresses the breast milk, I mean, she wants to know the measurement to give to the baby. And me, I didn't know. Okay, so it's a big challenge. But you were saying it depends on the baby size and the age. Yes, the way, because a so five, would, five kilo baby would eat more than a three kilo baby. So how do you understand? How so do my, one, one of my that? slides spoke about what, how do you know if the baby is getting enough milk? Yes. Yeah, so if the, within one to two hours, if the baby is not opening the mouth or crying for feed, then you know that I get enough. Because overfeeding too is not too good. I hope you get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So, hello. Yeah, hello. Um, I want to find out if you have. Please, your voice is a little down. Can you? Can you hear me, Rose? Well? Yeah, can hear yes. you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, I want to find so, out a patient who is having um, typhoid. Can that patient still breastfeed? Um, typhoid. I don't think typhoid would pass through the breast milk, so the person can breastfeed. And then, secondly, so if your H pylori is high, can you also breastfeed? Maxo, it's been double. Maxo, it's close right now. Yes. Uh -huh. Video. Can you ask the question again? You yes. asked me yes. if your age pylori is high. Can you still breastfeed? Yes. Yes, I think you can still breastfeed. Does that please have any other view? Oh, okay. um, yes. Um, yes, we can breastfeed uh, if you have age pylori or if you have typhoid. The thing about typhoid is that then the mother has to wash her hands very carefully. She has to practice very, uh, have her high levels of personal hygiene because the thing about typhoid is that it is, it is, um, what is what, what they call an orofecal, uh, it's transmitted orofecally. That means from feces to, to your mouth. Oh, okay. So if the mother doesn't wash her hands properly, she can infect her baby also with the with the typhoid. So and not to when, the I'll, when I'll say that the breast milk is prob is fine, but it's just that in her personal hygiene, she needs to to mm. to be very uh, have high standards of personal hygiene. So, so so that's what I'll say about that. Oh, okay. But H pylori is in the is in the in the stomach, so that one there it shouldn't affect the the. the the breast okay. milk at all. Okay. And please, adding up to the lady who just asked if your baby is full, how do you find out? I think it's about time we also, as parents, should do a little research. I know at best, a baby's stomach is like a size of a cherry. That baby can take like five to seven male. Uh -huh. Hey, cherry, and how so many people have seen see? cherry before? <laughs> can you bring another example? <laughs> um, cherry, oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> Uh -huh. And then day three is like walnut. Doctor, you are online. I wanted to correct hey. you. Day uh, three would be like a but walnut. But listen, no, listen, no. Some of these mm -hmm. things you are saying, cherry and walnut and things, what are some of the local mm -hmm. examples that you can give? 
that is the problem. So yeah. coming to that, I, I wanted to ask that at least your submission should also come in an ecology so that we also get to understand most of your big, big medical terms. Uh-huh. Now that I said cherry, the doctor wants me to translate it, which is going to be very... Oh, no, I'm not saying you should translate cherry. Look, look for a local fruit or a local example, mm-hmm. alasa mm-hmm. or whatever, something that... <laughs> People are familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like cherry, funny. yeah. I'm even know what the uh-huh. size uh-huh. of cherry is. This uh, one week is like an apricot. May I then translate it apricot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then mm-hmm. uh, one month is like a big size of egg. Okay. Uh-huh. So probably if you are feeding, you should know the sizes and then what your baby can take. And when it comes to the feeding, the experience. And now my baby is teething. And Mommy. I'm breastfeeding him. I think that's so sharp. I feel the cat. So, so what I do is I just put my hand in cold water and use it to smear her teeth before I feed her. With that, she doesn't bite. I want to find out if it is the right practice. Please, the line was big, and I didn't hear the last part. Um, well. um, yes, the last part was the experience with the breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. When I'm breastfeeding her, now she's eating, and they are so sharp. So at times, I use my finger, I pass it through cold water, smear her mm-hmm. gum and the teeth before I breastfeed her, and she doesn't bite. So I want to find out if it is the best practice. Okay. And that works for you? Yes. Okay, so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, um, mm-hmm. I, I can't remember what I was saying, but if you just feed and realize you have so crack in your pole, yes. you should express. Our mothers will tell you that just give, give mm-hmm. the crack in your to the baby. Um, and the same, the heat in their mouth will heal your 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 the nipple. Uh-huh. So in this case, what do you even do? Do you have to go according to doctor's school? You go according to your, your mom or your in-laws? <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is what the Bible says. Choose you, choose you this day who you serve. I mean, what I know is that you need to, to let the nipple rest so it will heal. The constant sucking at the nipple uh, and the moisture around the nipple from the baby's mouth will, will, will take, will give you, first of all, it gives you pain. It gives you pain. And sometimes the pain is, uh, the crack is so bad that the, you can bleed. So my advice will be that you shouldn't put the, the, the sore nipple in the baby's mouth. Mm? So let it let it heal before before you do that. So I, I don't know uh, about 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 um, what what the, what our mothers have been telling us whether it works. But 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 what I know is that you rest the nipple, you let it dry, and you use some of the milk to 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 smear you smear the milk on the nipple, let it dry. And then give it a couple of days to heal, and then and then you can restart. So 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 this is what I'll say. And the reason you have to express the milk is that 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 breast will get engorged. And when it gets engorged, it gets painful, and you are at risk of getting um, uh, an abscess, exactly. breast abscess. So that's why you need to express the milk and and dispose of it. Yeah. So 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 that's what I'll say about that. Mm. Okay. Um, can I continue on? Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, with the teething and then the breast feeding as well, is, how do you how do you do it? With what the is, what the earlier on I said mine worked for me. I had to smear her gum with cold water. I'll just put my finger in cold, cold water, smear it with, on her gum, and then teeth it off before I breastfeed it, and she doesn't bite. But what might be okay for me probably will not be okay for me. Hello. I don't know if you can touch a bit on that one. And what I do is it even good? Is it the best practice? As in using the cold water to smear her gum. 
Hello. I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing about what, what you are telling us. It's, it's, it is your experience that yeah. you have. And as uh, Griselda was saying, it, it works for you. Is that not so? Hello? Yeah. It works for you. And the cold water you are saying, what is it? Is it uh, ice cold water or just ordinary tap water? Um, ice cold water. Ice cold water. Yes. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't see anything harmful in it. I don't see anything harmful in it. If the water is not contaminated um, mm. and it works for you, I think that's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And please, apart from my method, do you suggest those teaching gels and then the powder? Um, yes, there are some of the teething gels on the market. I don't know what, what, what everything on the market, but there are some of them also mm -hmm. which helps to reduce the soreness that, that, that the, um, the kids have. So yes, uh, the teething gels uh, are, are fine, but you need to be sure that whatever product that you are getting mm -hmm. is something that has been recommended by a health professional so that you don't end up with something else. So so that's what I'll say. Okay. Um last question. How many times are you supposed to breastfeed a, a baby who is eight months and during the night? Oh you know the if the purpose of doing the day and night breastfeeding most of the time is to help with the family planning, the natural family planning. But after eight months, after six months, that thing is no longer effective. So you still feed on demand, but it will not have effect on you when it comes to family planning. Oh, oh okay. Uh, um, it wasn't even about family planning, like how you, your, the parents, or the so mother, you feed on and demand. also, okay, cut some sleep. Oh, all right. I just give water if the baby wakes at night. Water at eight months. Yes. At eight months. Yes. No. Eight okay, at eight months. That's after six months, so we can. So that's when you, when you start complementary feet. You can start water. Mm -hmm. Maybe at eight at dawn. At dawn, you also need to cut some. Seeds. You can. You okay. can. All right. Once you start giving complementary feed, you start introducing other feed to the baby after eight after six months, you can add water. Water is very important. So. Eight. Oh, okay. Okay. Any more? Yeah. Any more yeah. Yes, I have a question. I have a question. I have to know now. All right. Um, For the. Yes. My baby, my baby is um four three weeks now, but um as compared to my other. My other kids, he is bigger. Um, currently, our weight is 11.2. And then is a sign of worry. Because, yes. He is bigger. And as compared to, I have, I have two older guys who were not like him. He looks um, bigger. And I don't know. Whether I feed him every three hours, I don't know whether I should reduce the quantity of his um, carrying him is quite is quite a lot of job. So
So I, I just want to know whether his weight is normal. If um, I should reduce the number of hours he fees and the quantity, um, I just need an advice. Because um, per my birth history, he is quite bigger in growing than the others. And then the second question is, um, I don't know, um, because for him, I'm home inclusive, unlike the other boys where, because my work was very stressful, I do exclusive four months and then I add other, other um, feeds, that's the nun, so I start introducing the other cereals by six months. But him, I'm just doing strictly breastfeeding and it's like he's bloating more. So what was his birth weight? 3.8. 3.8. And at yeah. four months and some days, he's doing 11.2. I think yes. that's about time, almost times three of his birth weight. Yes. At four months. I think it's a little on the high side. But um, maybe... Family history, do you have um, people in your family who are big, you know? No, I am actually, I think I'm the biggest as, as I talk, and I'm about 84 now. I'm the fattest in the family when it comes to childbirth. Okay. My sisters, everybody is slim. My mom is almost a 54 size. My dad is about 60, so there's nothing, no history in their bloodline with SS weights. Okay, so I, I think um, maybe, I don't think you should reduce the amount of feed. And yes, answer, the baby will cry all the time, right? So let's continue. Maybe you should see a, 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 a nutritionist. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I agree that um, you should consult a pediatrician and, and the pediatrician will probably um, refer you to a, a nutritionist. I think three times the birth weight at, at three to four months is, is, is quite a lot. 11 kilos is, is, is a lot. So what I'll suggest is that see a pediatrician and then they will probably uh, refer you to see a, 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 a nutritionist. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. This is an experience I want to share. Um, okay. Yeah. With my baby, um, I had the same issue. I was strictly breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And um, he was growing. You know, when I saw the pediatrician, he was supposed to, he was um, gaining twice what he was supposed to gain okay and this amazed them because according to them they have been in the in this profession for like 30 years 40 years and they haven't seen this before so actually what they did was to examine the baby they wanted to know whether um there was water or so we had to go and do an examination and all that, and everything was fine. But this was in, in the States. Everything was fine and all that. So now they were okay. So what they told me was that they told me to continue with the breastfeeding because he wasn't feeding on anything, just the milk, breast milk. So what, what they said was that my, my breast milk is so nutritious. That's what they concluded on. So they advise that I continue with whatever I'm doing. The baby is fine. No matter what um, weight he's gaining, the baby is fine and all that. And they said when he grows up and it's not his stature, natural stature, he will, he will lose weight. So this was my experience with that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing your experience. But I think the key point here is that it is important to see a pediatrician so that we are sure that there is nothing untoward going on. And once they examine the baby and they see that there's, the baby is fine, then you can continue. So it's important that you see a pediatrician, let them examine the baby, 
make sure that there's nothing untoward going on, and then they will give you advice uh, from there. Okay. Hello. 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 Yeah. Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, yeah. Um. I I I appreciate. It. To all the thoughts mm -hmm. and all that has gone on, um, <laughs> I want to find out the competitors, uh, the competitors of mm -hmm. uh, the breast mm -hmm. with the young one. Just a second, uh, Mr. Michael, please can you use your mic? Uh, for, so. hey, please continue. Yes, I was asking about the competitors. I mean, the fathers. At what point can they they also come along with the breast? Is it when the the when the child grows up or when breastfeeding is over, I mean, when the, the, you cut the child from breastfeeding, at what point is that? Because I mean, I think that's the some some fathers may want to you know um, <laughs> also have have a feel of the breast, and it, it looks as if when the kids come along, it's a no go area for them. Oh, there's this, there was this um, video trending. I actually wanted to put it on my slides and play it for the fathers. In fact, I wanted to dedicate the video to the fathers. Okay, okay. so the thing is that give breast milk, give the milk to the baby, feed the baby for six months, mm -hmm. and ensure that the baby gets enough of the milk. The father can wait a while. So please, oh, wow. I think you can wait till yes. So How the breastfeeding. Oh, you are supposed to breastfeed exclusively for six months. Then, okay. at, at most after six two months, two years. No, at most two years. So after two wow. years, go back to your breast. Thank you. Wow. All right. All right. Yes. All right. Is that is that a longer time? No. Oh, it looks quite long. Two years is very long. It can yes. wait. I mean, it can wait. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll, we'll see what we can, how we can manage. Thank you. All right then. Please, any more questions? I have a question, please. Okay. Hello. Yes, please can hear you clearly. Yes, Madam Messi. Yeah, please. My question is: um, uh, when you start giving none, when I gave birth, my 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 milk was not flowing that much, so. Okay. Um, they gave my daughter nan one at the hospital. So when I mm -hmm. came, I continued. But when it, I continued for some time and then I stopped. My baby is now seven weeks old, and um, seven weeks. very soon I'll be starting work. So I would like to know if I can still go back and then give her the nan. And then uh, for how long? For instance, if I buy the nan one. And then it doesn't get finished for let's say one month. Do I discard it or I can continue giving it till it's finished? And okay, uh, should I question. also should I also give her water in addition to the nan one? Yeah, that's my question. Thank okay, you. Okay, so thank you. This week we are tackling breastfeeding exclusively, but I'll talk about your nan issue. Um, I'll share my experience. Okay. When I gave birth, I had to feed, I did exclusive breastfeeding for six months, no water, no feed, not, not even one. But I still had work and all that. It's just about psyching your mind and making it, just making the effort that you want to breastfeed. And I think you will achieve that. So before you go to work, start expressing and put down. You can store the milk and when you start work, they can feed instead of doing none and uh, combining the none and the breast milk at the same time. But if you still want to do none, then you have to add water. Please, you get it? Yes, yes, my yes. love. Yes, if, if, if you want to do both, then you would have to add water. Mm. Okay. But for me, I think you should express the milk before you go to work. When you come back, you can continue with the breastfeeding. Just cite your mind. You would have more than enough milk. And okay. you have money too. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Thank then. You. Hello. Yes, please. 
Madam Messi. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, please, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, I'm saying that when I give her the nun, I did not mm -hmm. give her water. Okay. So should I give her water now or I should just stop it and then... So are you still doing mixed feeding or you are doing just the... No, I've, I've stopped the nun. Okay, I've so don't worry about that. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Because as you said, breast milk contains more than 90% water. So okay. it's fine. Yeah, you don't need to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Madam Teresa, please. Madam Teresa, please talk. Your mic is muted. Kindly you unmute your mic. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yes, I'm enjoying the the session so far. Um. I want to make a contribution about sore nipples. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm saying that there's something that contributes to the sore nipples. If the baby is well fixed on the breast, the, the nipple is not likely to get sore. So um, when the baby is being fixed for breastfeeding, the gum should rest on the areola, the brown area around the nipple not on the nipple because if the baby sucks on the nipple the nipples will get cracked and so um instead of stopping breastfeeding um and probably expressing because it is not all mothers who can make it hygienic the best um, thing to do in my view is to continue breastfeeding but let the position the baby well such that the the gum would rest on the areola so that the, the milk would be expressed into the baby's mouth and not the gum. It is improper fixing that leads to the sore gums. So when the gums develop, the sorry, the <laughs> sore nipples, um, sorry, when the nipples become sore and you fix the baby well, it will automatically heal. You don't need to apply anything or take anything. Um, as soon as you fix the baby properly, the nipple will, will heal. That's my contribution. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. But thank you. Thank you too. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I'm listening. But I think at times with the sore nipples, it, yes. it can be so bad that you really need to let the nipples rest a while. So I think that's where maybe probably the expression will come in. <laughs> you see, yeah, it I depends on it depends. I, yeah, it depends on the on the woman. You see. When the woman is um, capable of doing it hygienically, you don't have a problem. But when there would be contamination along the line, the best thing to do, you know, is to fix the baby well because it's improper feeding, you know, fixing of the, the baby that leads to the cracked nipple in the first place. Uh -huh. So continuously fixing the baby wrongly, you know, will de definitely make things worse. Right. Uh -huh. So what, in as, as much as possible, we should try not to express the milk when, you know, it should be the last resort. Okay. It, should be, it should be the last resort, you know, depending on the community in which you are, you are practicing. <laughs> oh, yes, depending on the community in which you are practicing. If you are practicing in, like, um, in the hinterlands and all that, you tell a woman to express. By the time you are where you are getting diarrhea, you know, and you are worse off in mm -hmm. the baby. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you to. Thank you. Hello. 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 I'm done. Um, Teresa, I'm done. Can you, can you oh, okay. Um, hello. Yes, hello. Where do I do that? Okay. Shall I go on? Yes, please. Okay. Um, first, I would like to say interesting conversations going on. Um, 
we've all been talking about um, one of our breasts coming and then the other one not coming. But I want to find out, is there any way we can help the other one come? So for me, instance, my left breast comes a lot. And um, yes, I've been taking the granites, um, the abenquine, the mashke, even mold. And the most annoying part is when I do it, the left one really, really fills up, but then the right one doesn't come. And I'm having so nipples because my baby is constantly feeding on only one breast. But is there any medication we can take to be able to help the other breast come, the other breast milk come? And then I'm also having a challenge with infection. So I have um, a skin infection. And because I couldn't take the wormers when I was pregnant, I, 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 and I can't take the wellness now that I'm breastfeeding too. The, the things are still on my skin and I don't know what to do. So is there any way, sometimes I feel like I don't want to breastfeed her for a week or, and then go and take the, the wellness so my infections go. How, how do we cope with yeah. such things? Thank you. Can I ask my question? So I think it's from the onset. I'm sure you were given one particular um, breast to the baby, <laughs> neglecting the other. That's how come we have this problem. But I think you should try as much as possible to give the other one as well. Probably the more the baby suckles on the other one, the breast will start flowing well with that particular breast as well. That's what I think. And you're talking about duema. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. I'm thinking it's where ma and you are having a you are having a skin infection as well. Yeah, yeah. How were you able to diagnose that the skin infection was due to um, when? You can't be sure till you go to a hospital and see a doctor to be reviewed. So I think that you should go to the hospital and be examined first before you decide on whether to take a duema or not. Because, yeah. Mr. William, I think one, one, someone wanted to ask a question. Okay, please, any more? Yeah, um, I think I can ask my question. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a boy, um, he's one year, two months now. And um, the mother, now the boy doesn't breastfeed. He doesn't take the breast milk during the daytime. But rather prefer taking it in the night. So the whole day the mother will try giving it to him. He will refuse it. But when it gets to the bedtime, then even he will rather go for it. That will be the mother asking him to even come for it. So, so with that, so I wanted to advise the mother that we should rather take the opportunity and um, stop him from taking it. So that he can concentrate on eating the porridge and then some uh, isolate food. So I want to find out, like at age two and two, uh, sorry, one year, two months, is it okay? Um, we stop him from taking it since he, he has already stopped taking it in daytime. Um, from the from one year and about, you know, we say do exclusive for six months, then breastfeed till two years. But after a year, I think it's cool. Or you wait 
for like one and a half years. Time, so. But the most important yeah, is will it affect him? So in the day what God has yeah, like Hello? Neither the boy or the mother. Neither the boy or the mother. No, no, no. It's not affected. No, it's not affected. I hope I answered you. A uh, question. Does the boy eat any other thing during the day? Does he eat other foods during the day? Uh, yeah, he takes porridge. We 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 keep uh, we, the mother has has been preparing this cereal porridge like wheat, millet, different different kinds. So that one he takes it all right. Yeah. And then as well as well as well as he takes it all right. But he he's what one year. One year, two months. One year, two one months. One year, two months. Okay. I yeah. mean, I, I suspect that. He is not taking the breast because he wants, I mean, he's getting any nutritional value from it, but it's just a comfort for him to help him sleep. <laughs> you see, so um, I don't think nutritionally he'll be affected if, 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 she's, if the mother stops giving him the breast because he's eating other things. The breast for him now is just a, a, a comfort. And as a, an earlier, uh, earlier male, Speaker as he's taking over the father's role now. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I think I, I think that's why you're worried. He's he's taking over mm. your, your role. <laughs> oh, they they they've sacked me for bed, so now he's sleeping on the bed with Ah, uh, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Please, any more? Hello? Any more questions, please? Okay, so I think we'll end this here. Thank you so much for partaking and sharing your experiences as well. Have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye.